in my opinion, has always worked well for me. I've painted um, ceilings, walls, etc. with it, and it always looks like a good finish. This particular one is aqua enamel, it's non-yellowing finish, and it's my semi-gloss appearance. So rather than using the British paints semi-gloss finish, I'm going to be using Gelux instead. However, what I will also be changing is my paint primer. So previously I was just using a primer by itself on my other window frames, and I have to say, I actually wasn't that happy. For that particular product, I did use British Paints Paint and Prime. So this is just a primer that you put underneath. And then on top of that, I put three coats, yes, that's right, three coats of my water-based semi-gloss semi paint, which to be honest with you, you should only do two coats with that. So I did three. So I'm not that happy. I'm having to repeat myself a hundred times over, you know, sanding, cleaning, painting, sanding, painting, sanding, painting. It goes on and on and on. So if there was a way that I could streamline it, because I do know that it is a thick, heavy timber freight look that we want to get rid of, but is it my product? Is it what I'm using? So what I have done is I have invested in some Dulux Aqua Enamel Paint. So in theory, what I should be hoping is that I'm going to use one coat of my Paint and Prime in one and two coats of my top coat, which is my semi-gloss, rather than one primer and four top coats. So let's see how it goes. Oh, I hope it works. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired of painting. All right, so first up, what we need to do, as before, is we need to remove all of the fittings around the windows, and I've got the perfect place to take these. Now that all of my fittings around the window have been removed, it's time to get down to sanding. For this, I'm going to be using, again, my coarse P180 grit paper. I'll be wrapping it around a lovely sanding block to make it more comfortable for me. And remember to always, always, always put on your dust mask. So this is my dust mask, which also is good for paint fumes. And just popping around my head. I'm also going to be using some gloves as well. So I just don't like the feeling of sandpaper on my hands. So really getting myself geared up. And for this one, you're just taking away the surface color of the timber to any paint that was there before. And you want to go in the direction of the grain like so. which is just going to get rid of all of that mucky debris because we don't want to be painting over that whatsoever. So I'm just going to go on, give it a wipe down. <laughs> so as you can see, sanding is pretty, pretty straightforward actually, I'd say. Um, but as you can see, we do have some holes where the brackets used to be for the hinges before. So what I've got here, is just some timber filler, which is a natural timber finish. Now, um, it does up to six millimeters in depth of holes, and this is gonna be ideal for me to use in those little small areas. It does, according to the instructions, take about two hours for it to dry, and then you can sand it down and paint over it. So, what I'm gonna do first of all is get my potty knife, and I'm gonna fill up those holes. So this is just stuff that I got from Bunnings, really straightforward, but the idea of doing the holes, especially if you're not going to be putting back those brackets again or those uh, blinds, you really want to fill them up so that when you get that nice, when you do paint over, you get that nice sleek finish. And this is just simply a putty knife, which is going to allow me to put some putty inside of those small teeny weeny holes that we've got and really just fill up the holes. It's really, really basic. Let's take a look. So here we have the filler and you can just squeeze it out, but I don't really need an awful lot. I'm just going to take off a section like so. Replace the tube, replace the cap, and I'm going to get going with this side over here, and I'll show you guys what I do. And all I'm going to do is using the flat of my putty knife, I'm just going to push in the filler into the hole, like so. Try and fill it up as much as possible in all three holes. And here you have your holes and now filled up, as you can see. 
and don't worry about the excess because you will just sand that out and that's it so now that I've filled in my holes I'm going to wait for them to dry up give them a light sand over the top do my primer and hopefully fingers crossed we're going to get someone with this one I've got a good feeling about this so over here I've got my prep 4 in 1 which is claims to be a primer, sealer, undercoat and stain blocker. I'm going to mix this up because it hasn't been used for some time then I'm going to pour it into my little bucket over here and get painting. Now that's done, I'm just going to get my brush and take off the excess. Now to pour paint primer into my basket. My surfaces are lovely and prepared, they're nice and dry and they're ready for painting. I've got my 4-in-1 paint primer and I'm going to go ahead, got my rip protective gear on and uh, let's just get going. Let's just see how we go. So, dabbing a little bit and just paint. I have to say actually, it does look much whiter than its predecessor. So, I'm hopeful about this. It looks a lot whiter so far. Time will tell. So, as you can see, it does already look quite white. Obviously, I'm not a painter. You guys are probably telling me, like, in the comment section below, you're doing it wrong, but I'm trying. This is trial and error, so let's see how we go. Let's carry on and get this finished. So, for these tricky to reach areas, and you're really kind of worried that you might just end up painting your frames or your windows, I've opted to use some frog tape, which is painter's tape. Now, I did a bit of Googling. I did a bit of Googling. And I looked at your traditional scotch blue tape and I looked at this one and apparently this one is the better one to use because it comes off neatly and there's less of the overspray with your paint with it. So I'm going to try it out. Now frog tape does come in two different types. There is a, a green and a yellow. Yellow is for delicate areas. So for example, if you're painting around your windows and you kind of don't want to get on the glass and the green is for your other surfaces areas. The great thing about this, it is green. So I can see it on a white background. Obviously, if you're painting your room green, this colour, you may not see it so well. So just bear that in mind. Once your wood filler has dried, make sure that you do lightly sand the area before you do prime over it. So I'm using a 400 grit sanding paper and I'm just going to do it very gently, sand over those areas. primer coat has dried and I have to say it's actually looking quite good compared to the last set I did. So right now I've just got my 400 grit paper, sanding paper, I'm going to sand away any imperfections and very light sand just so that the next layer, which is my top coat, is going to stick on it nicely. Now it's time for our top coat and to do this I've got a new box, box of Dulux Aquanel and I'm going to stir it until it's all mixed in beautifully. <laughs> Mix all of that oil in so it looks gorgeously white oh yeah maybe the fumes are going to my head the excess to the paint so, okay so just cleaned up after myself and um, I'm using my sugar soap wipes for this they're very they're very good actually they do have soap in them but they nicely just pick up the paint um, obviously, if you are using a carpet, I would strongly recommend a dust sheet because you don't want to get any paint in the carpet area. So just give a bit of a scrub. And when it dries up as well, these things are like plastic. You can just peel them off really easily. I'm actually just going to give my tin a bit of a clean as well because I kind of want to be able to see the instructions next time I'm here. just finished my first coat of your top coat and I have to say the difference is night and day from what I was using previously I'll just show you guys what I mean it looks spectacular gorgeous just look at that that is stunning so that's your primer and that's your top coat and you can just see the difference it is literally glistening and I can't wait to do my second coat <laughs> So before I do my second coat of my aqua enamel top coat, I'm going to just take a moment to 
caulk up the area. Now, as you can see, this timber is a little bit aged and it is starting to crack away and there are some cracks and some gaps in between, as you can see. And so to remediate that, I'm gonna be using No More Gaps, which is Selly's No More Gaps Colored Caulk. Now this is brilliant white, so it will be in keeping with my current frame that I'm painting it. And essentially I'm gonna be putting this on before I do my final top coat, because hopefully then it'll be nice and blended. So what I've done so far is I have just cut off the tip of the caulk like so and it comes with a nozzle and you just screw in the nozzle and then you place it in a caulking gun like so and then essentially what you want to do is this little tip here comes all the way up until you can prime it now i'm going to be using some disposable gloves And I'm going to select the area that I'll do first. Now, it is really important to clean the area prior to putting your caulk in. So I'm just going to use my sugar wipes, sugar soap wipes to clean up the area. And then we're going to get caulking. Okay, so on the back of the caulking gun, so on the back of the, um, so on the back of the caulk, it does tell you how to use it. It does say that you need to fill in the gaps very thoroughly. And once that's done, use a wet finger. And I'm using gloves so I don't get it on my skin, but a wet finger to smooth out the area. So let's give it a shot. And it does take up to 72 hours for it to dry. So ideally you wanna do this on the day when you're not gonna be painting because you gotta wait a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just gonna prime up my gun first of all, as you can see, so we're gonna start seeing it coming through. There we go. It's just making its way up the nozzle. Do find with this particular caulk, it is giving me a lot of extra seepage, so I'm going to use this for other areas. So just wipe off any of the excess filler using a damp cloth, and I'm going to say that's looking pretty good. So now what I've got to do is wait for 72 hours to elapse so that I can do my hopefully final and last coat of the top coat. <sighs> tick -tock, tick -tock. Now that my caulk has been left to dry and it's looking, it's looking good, I'm excited to now apply my top coat of my Dulux Aqua Enamel to see exactly how many covers I will need because as you remember from last time, the covers were just, as you remember from last time, the previous paint that I was using was just not sufficient, not good enough. So it's time to apply the top coat. But of course, first, before we do that, we have to pop on our protective equipment. And let's get painting and see exactly how well this performs. I have to say I'm actually pleasantly surprised. You can see the difference between this colour and this colour. So it has managed to give a nice top coat and it looks nice and glossy. Of course it's going to dry up, but so far so good. So first impressions, it does actually cover the area quite nicely. You can tell there is a marked difference between the area that's been painted and the primer coat. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's gonna give me a beautiful finish at the end of the day. And I can't wait to just carry on and show you guys the end results. <sighs> One down, a hundred left to go. All right, so I'm actually quite pleased with this because the finish is gorgeous. It's shiny, it's white. Um, don't mind the walls because I am going to paint the walls white, so don't worry about that. But anyway, now I'm going to take off my frog tape, which was keeping my aluminium wall frame nice and safe. And um, here's the moment of truth. A little bit disappointing because I can see... Uh, I can see some line here. Now, I am wondering... It could be the timber or it could be a gap. I'm gonna to have to get a microscope to have a closer look. I guess if I was not using this tape, I probably would have just painted over it and made my life a lot easier. But because I've used this tape, that hole, that whatever it is, is now visible. So I'll probably have to come back and use maybe caulk or something just to fill it up because that will make a nice, clean aesthetic finish. But nonetheless, I'm still very happy.